I want to have a talk with you guys. I know a lot of you have come to our show because of some of the work that I've done in the Democratic Party and reforming it and challenging it. Maybe some of you uh, discovered the show from my work at Bernie, with Bernie Sanders in 2016 or at TYT afterwards doing you know movement or organizing on the ground or reporting. There's lots of ways people have come to the show. But I, I, I will say I think that a lot of folks come here because they're not interested in, in you know, inner party fighting. You're not interested in personality critiques. You're interested in getting stuff done and how to do it. And I was thinking a little bit yesterday about some of the lessons I've learned from my mentors. I have throughout my career sought out people who were around different generations, who were around when the Democratic Party uh, used to win and cared about winning. And uh, you know, to learn about how the rules of the party were set, how movements work, when unions got uh, basically cut away from the party, you know, what's happening with the right wing right now. I seek out mentors, and I think everyone should uh, in their fields. One of the lessons I was given a few years back uh, during the Bernie campaign and a little bit afterwards when I was on the Unity Reform Commission was I, there was two two pieces of advice. One was know the game and then win it. And the second was politics is energy, whether it's energy on the ground, momentum building, energy being thrown against you, is how you use that energy and how you move your opponent's energy. So those two, these two lessons here, know the game and win it and politics is energy, I want to talk to you today about. You can't know the game. You can't win if you don't, number one, know who your opponent is, know what you're fighting for, know how the game works, and then know how to move through the game with that energy. We're at a really critical moment right now. In history, there are, I, I opened up the New York Times today and seeing the escalations, the military escalations that are occurring around the world with allies on the U.S.'s side pushing back against the authoritarian allies, whether it's it's folks like Orban and Putin and Modi all working together right now. Uh, there's a conversation about either there's conversation literally about Russia moving into Cuba right now. Like, what are we dealing with here? It's not the Cold War anymore. This isn't a fight over communism versus capitalism. This is about who's in charge and who's going to make the most money. Let's just be real. All of these world powers are owned by oligarchs. We've got all our oligarchs. They've got their oligarchs. And I'm a little shocked that we're not having a more open conversation about this on the left because they're thinking three-dimensionally about how to neutralize us while a, a military escalation might take place in Eastern Europe right now. And, and that doesn't bode well. And the, the negotiation terms right now, when Putin and, and Biden got together in a conversation and, and Putin said, you know, it seems like Biden's acting in good faith, which really shocked me. But the one thing on the table is eliminating NATO, which is essentially, you know, the allies. Imperfect, again, we can call out our own people and say they're imperfect and do a lot of things that I think we progressives would not agree with. With that being said... That conversation alone, I think, is worth discussing. Meaning, we are on the left so focused on the fights that we've been fighting for the last five years that I think sometimes we're not even paying attention to what's happening globally in a really intense way. Steve Bannon, as we've said in the show, has invested internationally, had a monastery in Italy recruiting far right candidates to run in their localities as far right and populist as possible. They beat the left in many situations. They lost some seats. They, they didn't win in the EU, but they've they won the movement and, and have built you know, movements in different countries, whether it's Italy or France or we see with Orban right now or Greece or other parts of Europe, Poland. Poland has declared that they are very scared right now. I'm thinking about this because I think it's important noting, like, 
something's going on in a way that hasn't happened in a long time. And I think we just have to digest it. I'm not saying you take a position on or become an expert in foreign policy or don't criticize the U.S.'s role in foreign policy or their past or their record. I am just saying we have to digest it. And how does it get this, 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 this come back to energy and the game? We have to understand the game, right? We have to understand the game that they're playing before we win our game. Labor is finally getting the attention it deserves. There are not necessarily more strikes than ever before, but they're definitely getting more coverage. And of course, that's going to inspire more and more folks to organize in their workplaces that you know haven't been organized before. Uh, and this is good, especially in an election year. And it puts pressure on Democrats to be better and act in real solidarity. You know, it's one thing to campaign on a lot of these issues. It's another thing to do something about them. And working people, in my mind, is progressive. Working policies, working people policies are progressive policies. We need to make that very clear. But simultaneously, there is a global approach. And I want to talk about energy because it, it's easy. If anybody's ever done martial, martial arts, jiu-jitsu, sometimes our opponents can use our energy against us. And we get baited. People pick fights. They, When you're baited and you get into those fights, you're distracted away from the big picture stuff. I mentioned the global stuff because that is a big picture agenda item. There's a pandemic. There's the economy that's in, in free fall. People are about to be evicted. The eviction moratorium is, is ending in New York in particular. Wages are not going up. BBB is basically dead on arrival. We can't even get testing out to folks. These are big picture things. And so I ask, and I know a lot of you who watch the show aren't necessarily these folks, but we have to ask, what are our allies doing? What are the folks out there in the progressive space doing that maybe, you know, maybe they're getting baited by attacks, inter-party fights? The left, you know, there's this whole like, like, a reputation that we eat each other alive. I, I don't buy into that. We eat each other alive when we're baited by our opponents to eat each other alive. Solidarity is a practice. It's an energy. And in these moments, we have to keep our eyes on what is most important. Who are our targets? Whether it's Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, or Joe Biden to pressure them in more aggressive ways, or Senator Schumer to pressure them in more aggressive ways. Those are the people who should be responding because it's in their own interest to stay in power. But energy is finite. So I'm going to ask you guys, how are you spending your energy? What are you thinking about? What are you tweeting about? What are you organizing about? What are you, whose doors are you knocking on? What are you complaining about? We are all feeling feelings right now. Where are we channeling those feelings? Because feelings are energy. Our energy can be so productive or it can be weaponized by our opponents. So. Know the game, play the game, use your energy wisely. That's the lesson today.